Hello, crafty friends. I'm so happy to be here. I'm Nikki of Nikki Hearts Cards, and I've got two cards for you today. I was looking at colors, and I love to stretch myself when I'm looking at them thinking, I've never really made a black and silver card. And so I'm going to use this paper pack and create something cool. We're going to do some fun techniques like stamping on acetate and stamping on vellum to create a cool monochromic monochromatic effect. And what I really love about using different color combos is that this card could work for a New Year's card. It could work for any time in the holiday season. It could work if you were trying to send a more masculine type of holiday card. It's just got so many ways that it can be used that I think it might end up being one of my favorites. I really love it. We're gonna start with some heat resistant acetate and it's hard to see it in my misty here, but it is there and I'm going to add a lot of powder to it because when you are heat embossing on acetate, acetate has a natural staticky type feature to it. So you really wanna remove all the static by using your powder tool. So I'm gonna use Versamark and when you're heat embossing on acetate, so normally if you're gonna stamp on acetate, you're gonna need some type of ink that will stay on a plasticky surface. So like a stays on or something like that. But if you're heat embossing on acetate, you can use your regular embossing ink pad and powder and once that is heated, it is not going to move anywhere. So when you're looking at acetate, you have to kind of make a plan for how you're going to get color on that and so I decided that I was going to stamp and heat emboss. I have two um, embossing powders that I'm really loving and I have not really thought about using some of these for Christmas and New Year cards but it just when I saw the paper color being that black and gray I kind of went to my embossing powder drawer and found these two colors. I'm going to make the largest one the polished silver Silver from Wow Embossing. This is my favorite silver lately. I'm really loving this embossing powder. And I know now you can kind of see the acetate in the image, but once I put that embossing powder on it, you're really going to see what we have stamped on here. And that powder tool really keeps it from sticking. So I'm going to use my embossing powder and tap it off, and you'll see this beautiful image that we've created. So let's get that over there. You see how nice it's looking? Oh, it doesn't look like much now, but when we heat it up, it's gonna be so beautiful and shiny. Okay, so check how this looks. Look at that beautiful polished silver. I will link all of these things in the description so you don't have to keep up with supplies. They will be listed for you there, so don't worry about that. It turns out beautiful. I do usually make sure that it stays pretty flat. We're gonna use a die cut to cut this out, but before I do that, I realize I would like to use my black embossing powder on a smaller snowflake, so let's get that one together. I'm repeating the same process and I'm stamping it here by the other one. So there's no problem with that. I did the powder and now I'm going to use this black glint. This is a glittery black embossing powder. Now, even though I've powdered, sometimes glitter is a little harder to deal with than others. So you definitely want to make sure you've got some type of paintbrush and this glitter is going to stick to me too, of course. Um, but I'm going to flick off the back here and then I'm going to use a small paintbrush just to remove any little areas. Now we're not worried too far out on this because I'm going to die cut this image. So you're mainly worried about the details that are close enough to be die cut into the image. So here's how it looks embossed, nice and glittery with that black tint to it. You can see it next to the paper here. Um, and so I'm going to clean this off, die cut these images, and then we're going to look and try to decide. So this is the black one, and then we're going to look and decide what types of paper. Do we want the front side or the back side for this card? Thought I'd take you through my process. I originally thought, okay, well, I'll have two snowflakes on this um, page and just spread them out. And then I realized the black one doesn't, you can't see its detail as much when it's on the black paper as you can when it's in front of the other snowflake. So I decided that I would just start layering my pieces. And man, acetate really makes a cool effect on your card because it's kind of shiny in itself. And then you've added that embossing powder. So you've got this beautiful, shiny snowflake. 
Okay, so I have all my pieces laid out here. We're using the paper, the back side of the paper. We're gonna use a sentiment from the Let It so Snow stamp set. It says, it's the season to sparkle, which seems like the perfect sentiment for this card. Now I did go and add a little distress ink and black soot around the edges of this card just to give it more of that spotlight type look. And so I grabbed a honeybee brush and I'm doing this all around the edges. I'm gonna speed through this and show you the next part. Now these are the new metallic pearls from Honeybee, and what I love is they already have adhesive on them. Especially when you're using something like acetate or vellum, you don't want to have that um, glue or anything seep out onto your beautiful shiny pieces. So here's that final card. The next card is gonna be a shaker card. So I used the largest snowflake in the set um, so that I can cut out the middle and create the shaker window. So we'll briefly talk about shaker windows, but the point of this video is more about the vellum and the stamping on the vellum. I did use a little piece of tape to make sure I had this window centered, and now I have an extra snowflake that I could do something else with out of some cute patterned paper. While I was off camera, I also added some distress ink around the edges of this. So on the other side, you'll see that it does have a spotlight type effect. So for creating the window, I used some double-sided adhesive and just put it all around where that window is going to be. Grabbed a reasonable size piece of acetate to make sure that I covered the whole area and then I'm going to trim up that piece of acetate to make sure that it's not sticking out from the back. Now that the window's ready we need to add foam tape all around this to give some space to place our sequence. So you just want to make sure that you have enough foam tape and that it's not cutting over into your design so you can't see it through the front. So I usually make a box around so a some kind of abnormal design like this where it's not like a perfect square or perfect circle. I'm going to make a box around the whole snowflake so that that's where all the shaker pieces can go. And then I'm still going to build up the back of this and make sure I have foam tape everywhere just so that when you stick it down it's all even and it doesn't... Um, so like if you only have foam tape around your design, the bottom part of your card is not going to be as firm and it's going to be not quite level. So I put foam tape all around to make sure that I've got my card very stable and so that it stays level and looks good from the front. It just makes it look more professional. My last tip for the shaker card is to put your embellishments in the center of the base. So don't put them in the window that you just made. Put them about where they're going to go on your card and then attach the front part of your card to it. It's also good to powder the inside of the window a little bit so that it doesn't stick. But look how awesome that's going to look. Okay, now let's embellish this card. And the reason that I chose vellum is because I thought that a clear acetate over a clear acetate window wouldn't really show up a whole lot. So I like that slight white background you get with the vellum. It just makes your design pop a little bit better if it's over a shaker window. And I made this a little smaller snowflake with kind of a different design. This one has a little bit more pointy edges than the one I cut the background out of. And I just think that looks better with the design. It just really breaks it up and it's like you have two snowflakes there. And I'm using that same black glint that I used on the previous one. So it's going to show up really nice on this um, vellum. Let me show you what it looks like before. I used my paintbrush just to get a little bit of extra off. And then here's what it looks like heated up. It just gets a little bit darker. When you're heating vellum, you do need to be careful. Keep this moving. It also helps to, when you have something glittery like this, to heat from behind. So I kind of go back and forth, but sometimes you'll spray the glitter off if you go on the top. So most of the time I'm heating from the back and I'm keeping my heat gun on a lower setting so that I don't burn the vellum. Now let's show you a few final touches. We're gonna to put this card together. See what I mean about using the vellum versus another acetate? It just shows up so well. I used a glue dot, which I will link in the description for you, but it's just a little dot of adhesive so that I'm not getting any glue on my clear window. 
Now, one of the many things that I love about honeybee stamps is that they make sentiments like this that have some open letters and some cursive. So then you can go and even customize your card a little bit by more just by coloring in the inside of that. So I'm using N5 on the very bottom of these letters. And I mean, it's almost like just adding a dot because they're very small letters, very easy to do, really fast. But I think it makes such a huge difference in how this sentiment looks and how this card looks pulled together. So once I do N5, I'm going to go ahead. You could do another color. I just really wanted it to be obvious that the gray was there. So I went from N5 to N1 for the rest of the letters. So I just used two markers and you ask, why did I think of doing that? I even left the little top part just slightly white. So we're basically coloring in two thirds of these letters here and it looks so cool. I mean, it's just that ombre look. I just, I think it really sets everything off. So I die cut this sentiment, which is also nice that the die comes with this. Um, you've got options to die cut sentiments and your snowflakes with this set. And I die cut it. I'm using a little level and I'm going to put that on there. I did also add some metallic pearls like we did on the last card. And I put one in the center and a few around the sentiment just to make it stand out. So here's the final card. All right, let's look at this card in action. I love seeing a shaker card move around. It's just so much fun for whoever gets this card. I hope you've enjoyed these black and gray cards. It's a little out of the box, but I think they would make some perfect New Year's cards. And if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Everything that I used in this video will be linked in the YouTube description. So if you click on that, that will help support me and I appreciate it. Once again, I am Nikki of Nikki Hearts Cards. And I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you soon. Follow me out there on social media. I'm popping up a playlist I think you'll enjoy. Have a great day. Bye.